Hello and welcome to another successful garden design show. Now in this episode we're going to visit a stunning little garden in the Alpujarras which is in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountain range just near Granada. We're also going to take a look at some of our successful garden design students gardens that they have done after doing our courses. Now these are complete amateurs with no design experience whatsoever so I think you'll be as amazed and impressed as I have been with what they've come up with and we're also going to take a quick look at this lovely little courtyard garden that I'm standing in now. If you're frustrated your garden doesn't look as beautiful as it could even though you've purchased lots of lovely plants then help is at hand. Plants are not enough, you have to have a good design layout. And when you combine design with the beauty of plants, that's when the magic really happens. It's our mission here at Successful Garden Design to show you how to do it. And it's much easier than you may think. I'm Rachel Matthews and I've been a professional international garden designer for over 25 years and I teach garden design online. This is the Jardin de la Apujara and it's situated in the Sierra Nevada mountain range near Granada. And as you can see, the setting is absolutely stunning. The garden is owned by William and Robert, who moved to the area a few years ago, and they have set up this garden along with some guest quarters and lodgings. Now, the garden, it's a Mediterranean mountain garden, and it obviously enjoys a similar climate to the Mediterranean coastal climate but with the added challenge of it being colder in the winter and hotter in the summer and of course with the effects of the altitude and what they found is that plants that grow here grow very well if they're looked after and those that don't just let them know by refusing to survive no matter what they do so the hardest thing they found with developing this garden is to get the plants through the first two years so as you can see, the garden starts out in quite a natural meandering fashion and then that leads you around to quite a formal layout with design but still the planting is quite soft and gentle uh, leading me through to this formal pond here and then the rendered walls behind and uh, William and Robert changed the, the wall colours from time to time quite, currently quite a bright yellow shade and then you've got the views back of the rest of the mountains here and something I particularly like about this garden is the vistas. Every time you turn around, there's something of interest to look at. They've got wonderfully positioned focal points and view lines. And as you discover, as you walk around the garden, you discover more and more. And they've got sort of um, details in both the planting and in the wall here. You can see the little window through and then the face mask at the top. So there's always something to catch your eye and keep your interest as you walk through the garden. It's a real voyage of discovery. Discovery. and each area is different it has its own personality some are vivid like in this section of the garden others are soft and gentle there's areas to relax there's something for everybody in this garden now William and Robert do have volunteers come and help them with the garden so if you'd like to do that um, I'll put details of how you can contact them at the bottom of the page and so you can come for a, a day, a week, a month, whatever suits you and give a hand in the garden and um, learn about how what it is to garden in this type of environment and they also do have their the lodging so if you want to stay with them uh, you can do so as well but if you just like to visit the garden it's it's open every Friday between April and October. And if you've not yet visited the Alpujarras, it's an absolutely stunning area to visit and there's lots of lovely little towns and villages that you can drive through on your way to get to the garden. So I thoroughly recommend having um, a day trip or even a holiday here. And now on to one of my favourite parts of the show, and that's looking at gardens that complete amateurs with no previous design experience have created after doing our successful garden design courses. Now this garden is Anne and her husband and they're living in Melbourne, Australia. And as you can see, they've started off with really uninspiring front garden and they've created this gorgeous little garden by cleverly dividing up the space and getting the planting right and making sure that the garden, um, they're using the space in the best way for such um, a small area. And I think they've done a great job. 
And also, a while back, you may remember that uh, Wolfgang uh, in Germany, he sent in um, the design that he was working on, and we featured it in um, some earlier Garden Design Show episodes. And earlier this year, he sent me um, an update on his progress. So just to give you a reminder, here's how it looked before. As you can see, a bit of um, a mound um, after the house was built. So he started from scratch, and um, he did the Great Garden Formula course and he's chosen to do his design on SketchUp so that enables us to have a really good guided tour and a look round at what he's done and as you can see again he's divided the space up nicely a bit like Anne and her husband did in their garden in Melbourne so the principles that we teach here at Successful Garden Design they work because they're so simple and they're, they've, there's a formula that we show people that enables it doesn't matter what type of garden you've got the principles work and you can completely transform your back garden your front garden whatever garden you've got the principles still apply and as you can see Wolf done, Wolfgang has done an amazing job not only has he designed the garden himself but he's built it as well and he's only able to do it in his spare time but um, so progress is a little bit slower than he would like but as you can see he's done an absolute amazing job so well done Wolfgang and we look forward to more updates from him in the future And on to our final garden in this show. And this is a gorgeous little garden that's in a little village in southern Spain called Jimena de la Frontera. And it's sort of above Sosa Grande in the hills there. And what I love about this tiny little garden is that the colour scheme is so effective yet so simple. It's two main colours. We've got the deep coral pink walls offset by the green of the chair and the green of the planting. And the simplicity of this scheme is vital in such a small space. But isn't it stunning? I mean, it's just so cute. Just by doing really simple colour schemes, it shows that you don't have to go crazy with your colours and that simple really is the key to adding the wow factor to your garden. So if you'd like some more tips on exactly how to create the wow factor in your garden, I've created a lovely little cheat sheet that walks you through everything you need to know. So there's five top tips and there's a little training video that goes with it walking you through each of the steps. So just go to successfulgardendesign.com forward slash wow. So until next time, take care. Oh, and at the time of filming this garden, in June 2017, this house was actually up for sale and it had been dramatically reduced, so I'll post the links to that beneath this video, just in case you fancy such a lovely idyllic lifestyle in the gorgeous Spanish sun. <laughs>